Hello, and welcome to Spoonflower's Craft Friday. My name is Jackie Tejera. I'm a Canadian surface pattern designer and illustrator with a shop here on Spoonflower called Unblink Studio by Jackie Tejera. Spoonflower asked me to create a video tutorial about doodling after seeing some of my sketching videos on Instagram. So I thought I could show you a bit about doodling, but also how to turn your doodles into a creative homemade gift idea. Something fun to make and to receive. The materials for this project are super simple. First, printer paper. I prefer the higher quality paper often called high performance printing or premium paper because the heavier weight is more durable. It's nicer for gift giving or hanging up and the print quality will be better if you want to make copies later. Also ink doesn't tend to bleed through quite as much with the thicker paper although you may still want to put down a protective layer underneath just in case. My doodle prompt pages which are available to download and print. Don't worry if you didn't have a chance to print these out. We can work with that. You'll need one good black marker. Um, I prefer uh, a fine tip Sharpie for this project because the lines it makes have a nice thickness. The ink is permanent and smudge resistant, but really any marker will do. If you have young kids involved, maybe a non-permanent marker might be a better idea. Also, if you have a variety of black mar markers, grab those too, but we'll talk about those a little later. For turning your finished coloring pages into a ready-to-give gift pack, I suggest something to put your finished pages into to make it a nice gift. For example, I have these report covers with inner pockets. Eventually, you'll put uh, the pages inside. Look for something bright, colorful, fun, and seasonal if you can. I also wanted to show you this option. I found this on a clearance table. It's fun. It's like... Um, an envelope and the pages and can go right inside that as well. A nice touch for these gift packs would be to add in a pack of coloring supplies like these colored pencils but if your intended gift recipient already has a lot of coloring supplies I don't think it's necessary. And finally if you want to make more than one gift pack then you also need a photocopier. Just make sure to copy your pages before they're colored in. Okay let's get doodling. Let's begin with the circles prompt page, which looks like this in your black marker. If you didn't have a chance to print out my prompt page, not to worry, just draw a variety of quick circles similar to this on your page and you'll be ready to go. You can see I have my fine tip black Sharpie here, but you can really use any marker. I've also gathered up a variety of different markers just because I had them on hand. This one is a chisel tip Sharpie, which has wide, thick lines. Uh, you can t choose a ultra thin one that makes these really thin lines. And then this one is a brush tip that makes these variegated lines like this. So those are that's pretty fun too. If you mix up the use of these markers, it can add a little fun variety to your finished page. But of course, you only really need one black marker. So let's just take a, a moment to think about what we're making here. Coloring pages. And the thing about coloring pages is that they should have lots of enclosed shapes that can be colored in. So instead of drawing single lines, like for instance, this, Think about drawing enclosed spaces more like this. And then also instead of creating open ended areas, um, let's say like this, uh, let's try that. So you see there's they're open-ended here. Think about drawing enclosed spaces. So as you make your shapes, think about enclosing them, creating smaller, interesting spaces, kind of like that. Uh, 
Um, let's think about filling circles, filling the insides of the circles. So you could do something like this. Really just, just be free. Don't think about things too much, whatever you want to do. Nothing needs to be perfect, which is great. You can also think about <clears throat> what to add to the outsides of the circles. Um, this is why I give you the prompt pages because it just gives you a little starting point. Sometimes a blank page can be <laughs> a little intimidating. So you can continually add to it as much as you want. Just go with it. Um, you might also want to join some circles together like uh, maybe we want to do something like this. Just whatever strikes your fancy. Um, you could think about things that are round, you know, faces. but I really don't want you to get hung up on trying to make things look like anything in particular. So I'm actually going to switch this up, change it around a bit. I don't want to really make a face because that's not what I'm, that's not what this exercise is about. So again, if you've got large spaces, think about dividing them up into smaller spaces, which would be fun for coloring in. Time for you to fill your page with doodles. You just had a lot of fun. I did. And you know, when you do this kind of thing, you kind of lose track of time, which is really nice. Um, so here I've just, I've gotten to, to this point. Now have a look. Um, this is where you want to look to see if there's any large areas that you might want to make even smaller, just like here. I guess I could add some more circles in here maybe. just to add a few more shapes to color in. Uh, if, if you're making these for kids, I mean, you could keep the spaces bigger. It just depends on what you wanna do uh, and who it's for. Um, let's see, what else could we do? It's also nice to keep a variety, like a lot of tiny spaces like here versus wider open spaces. It just gives a bit more interest. There's some wider open spaces there. Maybe I'll add a few more little circles in here just to fill in the corner. Why not? You might wanna, you know, dab a little bit of black ink into these little spots that might bug you because that kind of bugs me. <laughs> um, just to finish it up a bit. Uh, let's see, here I'm thinking, maybe I'll add some horizontal lines in here just to fill up this space. 
on another line in there. I mean, you could see how you could just keep going. Um, the other thing too, I just wanted to show you as I, I talked about the different widths of pens that you might have. So if you have other thinner black markers, you might add some smaller bits in if you really want to get uh, some more fine detail in there. Uh, not strictly necessary, of course, but it does add a little variety. Like that. Um, the chisel tip, as you can see, it's quite thick. Do I want to even put that in? Let's see. I could try it out something like this just to see if I like it. That's kind of fun. Put some in here, maybe. Mm, oh, maybe in here. And if you can just keep going, I feel like maybe, mm, yeah, I feel like I wanna surround these little squares I just made with some more lines. Don't know why. There's no reason. You can just do whatever you want. So just keeping in mind that you're trying to make little enclosed shapes like this. And really, I could just keep going and adding to this, but let's just do a little once over, see if there's anything else we want to add. Maybe join, the, add some more thin lines into these. And again, you don't need the variety of lines. You can just use the one black marker, whichever one you chose. And if there's any blank spaces that stick out to you that you want to fill in, just go for it. Mm -hmm. Like this. Put on some music if you have some. And just get lost in it. How fun is that? That's pretty fun to me. So, again, maybe keep thinking about keeping that little frame around it. So like, can you imagine putting this into a little frame that you just buy off the shelf? It would be a nice, Nice finished art piece, I think, especially if someone colors it in. Um, yeah, I think that should do. Just add one or two little round circles here and there. Oh, I feel the need to put some circles in here too. <laughs> Just because I like that jagged edge there, so I'm gonna keep it. Okay, I think we're done. Ooh. Okay, we're done. Okay, so onwards. Why don't you grab the prompt page that looks like a big grid and let's think about what we can do with the grid. So we can fill in the squares like this. And we can do things to the outside edge kind of like a frame. So maybe something like this. Now I might suggest when you're filling in the squares, not to fill them in left to right, top to bottom, but just fill them in randomly because um, it, will, it, will, it will give your overall finished design a more random look because sometimes what you'll do is you'll start with a motif and then work on the motif and then it kind of develops in a, a linear fashion, but we want it to look a little bit more random, I think, which makes it more interesting.
Okay, so we've just finished the grid doodle page. And this is kind of why I, I suggested at the beginning to kind of fill in your squares randomly rather than left to right, because you can see how the circle shapes, it makes it more interesting if they're all scattered throughout rather than in a row. Um, you know, uh, similarly with the angular kind of lightning bolts kind of scattered throughout or the starburst kind of shapes or the swirls, the flowers, it kind of makes it overall more interesting if they're all kind of randomly placed. So that's why I like to just jump around as I go. So there's the second prompt page done. Okay, here we are with our third and final prompt page full of squiggly lines. This one's going to look a little different because you're starting with single lines. And for this one, you know, you can think about parallel lines like this or um, enclosing shapes, of course, like this again. Um, drawing along the lines, always thinking about closing those shapes like that. So just start and see where it takes you. Now that your coloring pages are all done, just gather them up, put them in your folder together with your coloring supplies if you want to add that. And your gift is ready to give to someone who's lucky enough to get one. I hope you had fun today making my doodled coloring pages gift pack. I think it's a really great activity to do on your own with some music playing or together with family and friends as a group. I think there are other ways to have fun with this project. You could do this activity with a class where everyone gets to make a coloring page. You could have them put their name on the page, print them out and send each child home with a pack of coloring pages for the holidays. I think it would also be great for a party too. And then you can send everyone home with an artistic party favor that they made themselves. If you're a spoon for flower designer like me, why not take your doodles and turn them into a pattern designs? If you wanted examples or inspiration for this, you can have a look at my coloring book designs collection in my spoon flower shop, Unblink Studio by Jackie Tahara. And you can see how I turned some of my doodles into repeat patterns. So if you do create some coloring pages, I would love to see them. If you post them, please tag me at Unblink Studio on Instagram or Facebook, and then I'll be sure not to miss them. And don't forget, now that you have your coloring pages, they need to be colored in. All the best, take care, and happy holidays.